excess body weight is a term that's often used to say that people are getting heavier than they should, uh, it, and, and it really links to the fact that people tend to become uh, fatter, um, lose muscle mass perhaps, but, but gain uh, body weight in excess in terms of fat tissue. Um, fat tissue that may sit at different parts of the body, maybe under the skin, subcutaneous fat. Mm. Um, there may be also a component of fat that's particularly bad for, for health, uh, uh, more intra-abdominally mm -hmm. uh, in the abdomen. Um, um, and then there can be fat on other parts uh, of the body, in, in, in women particularly, also in, in the hips. Mm. Um, excess body weight is a general term to refer to the adiposity problem. Um, and particularly in, in terms of um, adiposity that's linked to bad health outcomes. Um, fat on the hips perhaps uh, in women is less um, um, of a problem in health terms than uh, fat in the abdomen um, uh, or subcutaneous fat in the abdominal region. So it's particularly the latter two components that, that are actually mm. being targeted by the term. Um, it links also very much to the question of or the definition of obesity mm. um, um, and overweight uh, categories uh, mm. as defined by the World Health Organization in terms of body mass index. So a body mass index that, that's uh, weight divided by height uh, to the square, mm. um, that's, that's an index that gives a global impression of how, how large is someone for a given size uh, mm. in terms of height. Um, it, it correlates strongly with body fatness uh, and the overweight category is a body mass index of 25 to 30 and mm. 30 plus is called obesity and mm. I think the latter two categories combined are also often referred to as excess body weight categories. But that's a more pragmatic interpretation of the, uh, of the term because um, one should realize that perhaps also these categories as defined by the WHO do not always match exactly uh, the limits at which uh, bad health consequences already uh, start to mm. exist. So excess weight obesity uh, is a clear risk factor for a number of cancers that become very frequent in the industrial developed part of the world. Right. Um, in women this is cancer of the endometrium, uh, it's cancer of the breast, um, so excess weight increases risk, adiposity increases risk of breast cancer after menopause. Um, it's um, in men and women it's colon cancer, it's cancer of the kidney, renal cell tumors, um, adenocarcinoma of the esophagus uh, has a strongly increased risk among more obese people. Uh, and in men, also aggressive prostate cancer risks are mm. clearly increased amongst those that have uh, that are in the overweight or obese uh, categories, as by WHO definitions. Um, the relative risks vary for these um, cancer types. Uh, for some cancers, the association is strong, uh, stronger than for others. The strongest mm. associations are seen for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus and uh, mm. an endometrial cancer, where obese categories uh, as compared to lean uh, subjects um, may have three and a half to four fold increases in risk mm. uh, for some other cancers the relative risks are a bit a bit less um, but, but, but there's a strong connection between excess weight and uh, and cancer risks uh, mm. epidemiologically speaking okay. for, for a large number of tumors Uh, yes, there is. Um, there have been quite numerous studies um, where epidemiological studies, that is, where data were collected on physical activity either as part of, um, of work uh, or in daily living uh, mm. through various methods, uh, questionnaires usually, uh, of various types. Um, and almost invariably these studies show that those who have higher levels of physical activity uh, tend to have lower risks of colon cancer uh, and there is also substantial evidence um, um, that indicates a reduced risk also for breast cancer. Um, these are two of the more frequent 
cancer types that have been studied also therefore more intensely. Um, it is quite possible that for further cancer types there, there are similar inverse relationships. Um, they have certainly also really documented also for some other tumor types, but maybe globally, globally the evidence is not yet as strong as for colon and breast. But the suspicion is definitely that for other tumor types as well, there will be inverse associations. It, it very much links up with um, alterations in hormone metabolism uh, that occur when people grow to fat uh, and at the same time also when they're physically inactive. These are often two um, factors that jointly contribute to the changes in hormone metabolism that I'm referring to. Mm. A first very important um, hormonal metabolic change in obesity and in case of lack of physical activity is what's called insulin resistance. That is a lack of response of muscle, liver uh, and other tissues to insulin in terms of glucose uptake from the circulation from blood. And this is compensated for by an increase by the pancreatic um, in pancreatic insulin secretion. So people that have insulin resistance uh, tend to have higher uh, fasting and non-fasting insulin levels. And insulin is actually a hormone that is more and more being incriminated as uh, also as a growth factor that can stimulate um, growth and proliferation of cells, that, that inhibits the apoptosis of cells, and that through these actions can favor the development of tumors. <clears throat> So that is one hormone that is very central, that has been intensely, more and more intensely studied uh, from this perspective. Um, the second set of hormones that are very important, um, uh, particularly in relation to uh, cancers in women, endometrial cancer and breast cancer in particular, um, are sex hormones, especially estrogens. Um, after the menopause, um, women no longer produce estrogens in their ovaries, um, but they do still produce androgens um, in the adrenal glands and in the ovaries, and these androgens can be converted in fat tissue into estrogens. And it is observed that um, as women are grow fatter uh, after menopause, they will have will then also have higher circulating estrogen levels um, in blood. Um, the estrogens um, play an important role in uh, the development of endometrial cancer. It is, it's well known from a number of observations experimentally but also epidemiologically that um, raising levels of estrogens uh, in blood will promote the development of, of, of uh, both endometrial and breast tumors. Um, another component that is actually a little bit more complicated but, but quite important uh, with respect to endometrial cancers especially mm -hmm. is that in the premenopausal women um, obesity is also strongly linked in some women with a phenomenon called um, ovarian hyperandrogenism that is the ovaries would tend to produce uh, too large amounts of androgens it's also often referred to as the polycystic ovary syndrome mm -hmm. um, here we know that hyperinsulinemia play an important role uh, in, in the stimulation of androgen synthesis um, by the ovaries. Um, and when this uh, syndrome of polycystic ovary syndrome develops, um, we see chronic anovulation. Uh, and in premenopausal women, we have then the phenomenon um, that they do no longer produce progesterone in the second phase of the menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. It's the absence of progesterone in, in this particular case in the younger women that is a strong contributing factor also to the development of endometrial cancer. Um, so these are a number of important mechanisms. Further, um, hormones that are certainly being implicated include, for example, the insulin-like growth factors. Um, higher levels of insulin lead to larger fractions of insulin-like growth factors uh, mm -hmm. that can reach target tissues and receptors. Um, there's, a, there's a free bi bi biologically active fraction of, of IGF-1 that is increased in, 
in blood uh, and in tissues in, in more hyperinsulinemic subjects. And actually insulin-like growth factors can also, just like insulin uh, itself, um, which shares a, a great deal of homology, um, promote tumor development by, by promoting cell growth, division, and inhibiting apoptosis. Mm -hmm. There's very little um, epidemiologic evidence that suggests that this might happen, um, but that's probably simply due to the fact that there are not many people who, once obese, when then they, they, they lose weight, mm. are able to maintain that lower weight for a very long period. Mm. Um, so it's hard to find people, large numbers of people uh, that are like that, uh, amongst whom one can then see what their risks are as compared to those who did mm. not lose weight. Um, there's definitely physiologic evidence uh, from other sources to suggest that some of the hormonal effects that may uh, mediate uh, the effects of adiposity on cancer development could be late stage effects. Mm -hmm. Some of them could also be early stage effects. But insofar there can be also late stage growth promoting effects, you might suspect that when you lower uh, um, estrogen levels, for example, by lowering body weight, um, that one might still, even at later age, have um, a lower cancer risk uh, as a consequence. It is simply, however, as I already said, the, the, the problem is that people do not usually manage to lose weight and, mm -hmm. and maintain that lower weight. So a strong general recommendation that, that has come out of epidemiologic research is to avoid weight gain. Uh, mm. throughout life rather than trying to revert it at all mm. uh, once you've reached uh, this bad uh, stage. Mm. Um, that's I think still by and large an open question. Um, I don't think we've got enough evidence to, to say much about it. I can just say that it is quite plausible that excess weight may have early stage effects um, uh, leading um, through hyperinsulinemia, for example, mm. to early stage um, genetic alterations that may be the first steps in tumor development. Uh, it's plausible that that, that development, uh, the, the accumulation of such early mutations is actually favored by a hyperinsulinemic state for some tumors. Um, but as I already also mentioned, there can also be later stage effects uh, on growth um, that, that may be linked to, to hormones that are at higher levels mm -hmm. uh, amongst more obese people. Um, so it might well be both, um, mm -hmm. but for the moment this is more a speculation than something that we've really been able to prove in mm -hmm. epidemiology. Mm. Um, it's very difficult to deconvolute certain um, um, elements in this type of research. We do know that people who have higher degrees of excess weight, uh, have a higher body mass index, tend to have a higher risk than those at the intermediate body mass index uh, in the overweight categories as compared to the lean. Um, but one possible speculation is that this is not just a dose-response effect only in terms of the metabolic alterations that correlate with that, but also that people who are already in the higher end of the obesity scale mm. may have been obese longer even before right. um, in an earlier phase of life, because it generally develops rather slowly, sure. and, and, and that's something we are also not able to really uh, answer that question, what, what is more important here. My speculation would be that with the increase in the obesity epidemic, also amongst very young people, that this may lead to an earlier occurrence of some of the tumors uh, that are linked with obesity um, than what we've seen so far. Well. I, I mentioned earlier something about the relative increase in risk for more obese as compared to leaner people, um, um, with relative risks varying from maybe 
slightly below twofold increase to f up to fourfold, uh, depending on the tumor type. Um, based on the relative risk and also the prevalence of excess weight in the population, we can make estimates of what's to call the population attributable fractions, mm -hmm. the part of overall cancer occurrence that it may that's potentially related to excess weight in particular as a separate risk factor. When we do such calculations, we clearly come to rather high estimates for a number of tumors um, um, that are frequent in our society in our industrialized societies. Um, the population attributable fraction may be the order of about 20% for colon cancer, but it may be as high as 50% for endometrial cancer or 40% for um, uh, renal cell tumors, uh, to name a, a few examples. Um, overall, thinking of all the cancer occurrences in, in, in society, well, which some also are simply not obesity linked, maybe more linked to smoking or to other mm -hmm. risk factors. Um, but still, when one looks at the overall cancer burden in a country such as the USA or, or Western European countries, um, it is uh, quite clear um, that after smoking, excess weight is probably the most important factor uh, that one should try to avoid to reduce the cancer burden. Um, maybe together with an increase in physical activity. Mm.